In this video, we are going to talk about the beginner's cash envelope system. If you or someone you know is trying to budget their money, but are finding themselves unable to stay on track, then you've come to the right place. By the end of this video, you'll have learned about a new way to keep track of your expenses and potentially curb your spending habits through the cash envelope system and be able to keep committing to your budget. Welcome back, Money Masters! It's another Money Monday, where we lift the curtain on time-tested tricks and tips that have been proven to help reduce expenses and increase savings. As we mentioned earlier, today we are going to be talking about the beginner's cash envelope system, which will help you learn about a new way to keep track of your expenses and potentially curb your spending habits and be able to keep committing to your budget. But before we dive in, I just want to let you know that on Wednesday, we will be discussing 5 questions that you must consider before investing your money. So if you don't want to risk missing out on that episode, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified of our next amazing video. Okay, with all that said, if you are just like us and you are totally committed to obtaining financial independence, then go ahead and tap that like button and let's get into it. As many of our loyal viewers know, we often tout budgeting as one of the most important steps you can take towards taking control of your finances. Our stance on that has not changed one bit and we are going to be talking about a budgeting method that will make it easier for you to oversee and keep track of everything much more easily and that is the cash envelope system. What is the cash envelope system? The cash envelope system is a wonderful way for you to keep track of just how much money you still have prepared for each budget category. The basic idea behind this is exactly what it says on the tin. Using your planned budget as a reference, you prepare a few envelopes. Then, you assign a specific budget category to an envelope. Then, you prepare the allotted amount of cash and fill your assigned envelope with it, and you work with the money in that envelope for the respective purposes. It is a financial budgeting method that has been around for a long while and it is actually quite simple. But there is still a substantial portion of people that do not know about the system or just cannot quite grasp how it works, why it works, and why people ascribe to it even now. With that said in this video, we are going to enlighten you on the benefits of using this system and later, we are also going to lead you through the different steps of setting this up. But before we continue, what are your thoughts on the cash envelope system so far? Does it seem like exactly what you needed to keep track of your finances more easily? Let us know in the comments below. How using the cash envelope system can help you budget better There are quite a few benefits to using the cash envelope system. To illustrate our point, let us first go through an example. It is a Friday evening, and after leaving the office, you decided to head to your local bar and grab a drink with some of your friends. You are all having a fun time when your friend asks if you wanted to come with them to a restaurant for a late night meal. You hear that and you check your envelope labeled, Hanging Out and Entertainment. You see that you do not have all that much left, so you decided to ask your friends and invite them over for dinner instead so that you will not go over your entertainment budget. Another example is if you are going grocery shopping and you started to get a craving for some ice cream. You were about to open the freezer to grab a tub of your favorite flavor when you remembered to check your cash envelope for groceries. After totaling the costs for all of the food you have already put in your cart, you realize that you might not have enough in your grocery budget to afford an additional tub of ice cream, so you instead decide to swap out a few of your snacks for it. The point we're trying to get across with these examples is that using the cash envelope system can help you not only allocate your physical cash more clearly so that you won't get confused as easily, but it can also help you stay on track with your budget so that you won't go overboard with your spending on a specific area like food or hanging out with friends. Aside from this, another more psychological benefit to using cash envelopes stems from using cash on hand. It is that using the system will help you feel accountable for how much you are spending on food or bills or your favorite cup of coffee and may help enforce spending discipline. If you have personally used the cash envelope system yourself, what are some benefits that you have experienced when using the system? Let us know in the comments below! 
How to set up the cash envelope system Now that you are aware of the benefits, you are going to get by trying out this cash budgeting system. Let us go over how you will be able to get this set up. The first step is creating a budget. We have gone over some parts of how you can start a budget in our previous videos on the best budgeting categories, the 7 secrets to saving money on a low income, and the 5 secrets to saving for a house as quickly as possible. So, we would like to cover budgeting with the cash envelope system in mind. The first thing that you need to do is to identify the fixed and variable expenses you make monthly. Fixed expenses are the expenses that you are guaranteed to spend a certain amount of money on. These tend to be things like car and health insurance, retirement plans, and rent. On the other hand, variable expenses are costs that vary every month depending on a lot of several factors including your financial situation. These tend to include groceries, entertainment and going out with friends, and investments as well. Once you have identified which is which, you can choose to go about your budget in two ways. You can have all of your expenses in cash and segregate it into envelopes, or you can hold the fixed expenses in a checking account while you split your remaining variable expense budget into your cash envelopes. This is mostly up to preference or convenience as some find it easier to keep track of their spending and budget when they have their cash on hand, while others prefer to have the fixed expenses like insurance and rent already accounted for and placed in your account. This does mean that people who want to use the latter method will have to refrain from swiping their card at all because that would take away from their fixed expenses. That being said, how did you set up your budget categories? Let us know in the comments below. The next thing to do is to assess your budget. You are going to do this to figure out just what categories need an envelope in the first place. In particular, it is a clever idea to make use of the cash envelope system to curb the expenses that just might make you go over your budget like groceries, restaurants, entertainment, gas, clothing, and other variable expenses. Make sure to assign cash envelopes to each of these so that you can keep spending on these to a certain limit which you have hopefully set in the previous step. Lastly, Fill out those envelopes and stick to using only the cash inside. Now that you have done the hard part of creating your budget, assigning cash envelopes to them and filling those envelopes up with cash, it is time to finally put your plan into action. Just remember that any money you use from a specific envelope is supposed to be spent only on the category it has been assigned to. If you are spending money on groceries, make sure that the money you're using on it comes out of your groceries envelope only. If your budget for groceries is, say, $150 for that trip, you take only those $150 with you for your groceries. That way, you will not be tempted to spend more if your groceries total goes over and amounts to $170. You are going to have to take some of what you put in there and put them back and it is difficult to do that but it is much better to do that than to ruin your budget for the month. Also, do not forget that once you have spent the money in your envelope, that money allocated for that category is gone until the next month. You will have to make do for the rest of that month or risk going over your budget. If you used all of your money for grocery 70% into the month, then it is time to raid the fridge or your pantry. This also presents a good opportunity to work on your spending habits, which we have also discussed in our videos about James Clear's Atomic Habits and the easiest way to become debt-free. Feel free to check them out for your reference. To cap things off, let us take a short minute to discuss some of the frequently asked questions regarding this method. What if I pay for my expenses online? One of the main aspects of the cash envelope system is that it involves paying for cash upfront with physical bills and coins as opposed to purchasing or paying for goods and services digitally. There are ways to get around this while still adhering to the cash envelope system. For one, we mentioned earlier that keeping the payments for your fixed expenses while having cash envelopes for your variable expenses is one way of doing that. Another way is to simply have all of your cash in envelopes before depositing them into your bank accounts at the moment you need to make payments online. One trick we suggest is to write on the outside of your envelope how much you have budgeted so that you know how much to spend digitally. What should I do if I have extra cash at the end of the month? 
If you have some extra cash lying in your cash envelopes at the end of the month, then congratulations are in order. You have managed to curb your spending and stay under budget. What you do with the extra cash is yours to decide. You can choose to add that bit of extra cash of that same category for the next month, or you can put it towards your savings or emergency budget. You can also choose to reward yourself for doing well budget-wise. It is always a good idea to reward yourself so that you can keep feeling motivated to stick to this strategy. What if I have emergency expenses? If you have emergency expenses that are too big for your savings or emergency category, if you have one to manage, that will mean you will have to adjust your budget accordingly. In such an event, it is a good idea to talk the situation over with your loved ones and family members or an accountability partner and work through any viable solutions for the particular situation. If you are more open to talking about these kinds of things with friends, then you might want to do just that so that you have more perspectives to help with deciding what the best course of action to take is. So that's all we have for you today. We hope you learned some very helpful insights from what we've shared with you today. Please don't forget to leave a like on our video if it was able to help inform and positively influence your financial decisions and lifestyle and leave a comment down below about how you feel like this video will help you boost your overall income. Also, if you love our content, subscribe for more Money Masters content and updates and so that you don't miss out on our next episode of Wealthy Wednesday where we will be discussing 5 questions that you must consider before investing your money. Also, we'd like you to consider sharing this video with at least one friend. It would mean the world to us if you would join us in our mission of helping good people like you keep more of what they earn and earn more from what you keep. That'll be all from us in this video, Money Masters. We'll see you in the next video.